these are two of my uh, newest drawings. Uh, they represent several different uh, directions that I like. One of just portraiture, uh, and then the other is more of a fantasy uh, subject, but also has to do philosophically on some ideas I have about man and nature. Uh, in this one here, this is a friend of mine, um, and um, I did this portrait of her that I feel is uh, very, uh, very touching to me and emotional. It catches this young woman in a moment of deep reflection. And uh, rather than just being uh, something that you might look at for uh, uh, beauty or something like that, it's certainly that. But I think that the emotion carries uh, a lot of the content of this piece. And uh, you would see as you move up close to it that it doesn't stop giving. The closer you get to the drawing, the more it gives you. Even when you get inches away, you find yourself going into another, uh, another uh, uh, way of thinking, another avenue. Um, just looking at the uh, eyes, they, when, you're, when you're back, you see the whole figure. When you get close, you really are participating with this figure in that thought, in that moment. So there's a lot of emotional, uh, I mean, I would say it's emotionally driven. There's a lot of content to it in that regard. Um, and, I, and I love the, the, the way that she sort of moves, almost wanting to move out of the, uh, out of the picture. And that's, that was part of the content, too, of, 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 of actually having movement in it to, so that you follow it out and down. Um, so there's lots of things that carry this, this drawing, plus the softness of it, the sheer softness of it, which I think is a way of also inducing the viewer to come closer, uh, making the, the piece a little bit more. You feel like uh, you can move that in with, move into the drawing without offending the sitter, uh, so to speak. Um, and then in this, uh, this other one next to it, this is a, a different uh, model. This model uh, was a woman that I've actually worked with at school where I teach. She's one of the life drawing models there and one I've used for several years. And um, uh, she, she and I worked well together in the sense that if I would pr uh, propose to her a particular uh, aspect of the pose that I wanted, I wanted something that had some wonder or discovery in it, she would get into that aspect of it and take a, uh, take a lot of delight in cooperating and seeing if she could come up with, with a gesture uh, that would accommodate what I was uh, 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 trying to get out of the out of the pose, and then later out of the drawing. And this bird is Aristophanes, who's uh, uh, a raven that is uh, that lives at the Audubon Society. So he's been my my model for several years too. And I would go up there and draw and photograph Aristophanes, and he was often very cooperative. He's quite a character. And this this one is called the Guardian, and I I like the mystery of. The fact, who is the guardian? Is she the guardian of, of this bird? Is the bird the guardian, the raven Aristophanes, the guardian of her? Or is the owl in the back the guardian of both of them? So there is this, uh, the, the questions that, that get asked in the drawing, that, uh, that plus the idea of the scale that comes to being, the, how are they equal? They're equal in size and scale, and that throws in a, a question about man and nature that I find really engaging, too. That's something that um, I've, I've thought a lot about and actually has peopled my drawings uh, for the last couple of years. These two drawings, uh, these were uh, done several years ago, and I wanted to include them in the show because I think that they, they definitely relate to the last one that I just finished. Um, that we saw over there with the model and the and Aristophanes. Uh, here, I've, I've, uh, this was sort of the beginning of this theme that I was having a kind of fantasy, um, man nature uh, kind of theme. Uh, in these two drawings, one of the things that was different about it and what excited me about it was this, this technique of allowing a colored band to move through the drawings. Um, I was somewhat influenced on the idea of The Secret Garden, the movie The Secret Garden, where children could walk through a gateway and a hedge and enter a whole new land. In this case, I used my gateway as these colored bands, as, as though you could walk up to the drawing, the black and white drawing, and see this, open this door, this band of color, and enter another world. Uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting theme. I, I have not really explored it. Uh, very much. This was the, the introduction of it, but then I let it go for a while. But again, here, but here in the theme, 
is of the the man woman as sharing sharing food and sharing it with with the other creatures again the idea of the balance and the uh, alignment with species um, and again the owl which seems to be in every piece I do nearly uh, as the watchful guardian of, uh, of the scene and you can see the leaves uh, tearing up through here as kind of giving a sense of the of the wind and the and the elements and also uh, the sense of the persistence of life and then the, the conclusion of life the, the leaves that fall and die so it's got a, a, there are a lot of things in it that I find people this that would give people a trigger uh, that might trigger their imagination as they looked at the piece and in this one here um, these birds are looking on as witnesses it's like a pair looking onto this pair as the young man and woman uh, uh, come are formed from the tree and are and as they are both pulling things off of each other and revealing themselves to each other and to the world and that's kind of the the uh, the genesis of the uh, of my concept of, in doing this drawing so again there's this window then you follow the color up through the through this part of the drawing but then this area here you begin to see this relationship between man young man young woman um, she's pulling up a, a flower he's pulling a flower and some leaves from around her back and they're just kind of opening themselves uh, to each other into nature and again our witness our owl watches on and then in this piece here uh, this one's uh, about a year after that one and again comes closer to that first one we saw with uh, the same model and the birds but this is about a year later and here I, I really enjoyed the uh, playing with the character of Aristophanes or the character of these birds all looking around and I enjoy the sense that they may be nattering and telling stories to one another um, and she has this kind of uh, in wonderment is she listening um, you know what is her role in this scene so uh, I thought there's a there's a certain amount of humor to this too so it's not all dead serious there's really a little bit of humor to the nattering of the of the ravens and the fact that the young woman is just there as a as kind of a presence in a way she's sort of the witness to their um, I won't say foolishness necessarily but uh, the way they inhabit the scene she's there as a witness to that I love these drawings I love the concept of drawings I've really been uh, thinking of these pieces as complete and as whole as a painting you can't do any more. I would not turn these into paintings. They are complete as they are. They seem to, in my mind, not call for anything beyond what they are at this moment. This is called Conversation in Red. I did two paintings for this show, um, and um, I call them conversations because I think they move off of one another uh, in very delightful ways. They play off of one another. This one is conversation in red. The other one you'll see in a minute is conversation in gray. In this one, I was uh, playing with the, I, the concepts of the different kinds of uh, surfaces. The fact that a cup and its surface is very much like the, the, like the shell and the porcelain uh, qualities of the shell, even in the way it turns light. Um, but the, the man presence of it uh, creating this rather hard edge mechanical structure against the organic nature I think is a little bit playful and I look at it as being playful as if the ear of the cup is echoed sort of in the ear of the shell um, but yet as I said the surfaces are different uh, playing with the severity or the uh, not severity but, but, but this rather lean clean edge and then this edge that is very organic and, and uh, curvilinear, so that the nature of that shape is uh, gets echoed all through all through the uh, uh, the shell and other forms. Even in here, the drapery that I've chosen to use back here is a drapery that I also, to me, echoes the forms of this uh, of the shell. So it's again a play of texture and light and color. Um, and I, uh, this also was going back to something that I used to paint quite a while ago, just very simple elemental still lifes. Uh, so I'm having a lot of fun with this, with this stuff. I'm kind of not only thinking about, as I said, the playfulness between the surfaces and edges and textures, but also the playing of color.
Well, here's the other piece I was talking about, this conversation in gray. Uh, so I wanted to, and this one too to play off of that full rich chroma we saw in the last piece. And in this piece, just work with values and very subtle color. It still has a lot of the playfulness in the shapes, but, and, you know, echoing shapes within it, but it's a little more subtle in this piece. I love the coolness of, of the cup shape here and then the warm, very, uh, uh, very sensual forms in, in this piece and even in the colors too. But I've subdued, even the, the pinks uh, here and the purples have been subdued and, and, and held back as opposed to the last one you saw because I really wanted this piece to flow in, you know, so that the eye comes into it much like you would see maybe even in the sea. Uh, if you were to find this in the sand, you get that sense that the water or waves are flowing into this and then the curvilinear, then you get to enjoy the curvilinear forms and the subtle nature of the color and textures. So I had a lot of fun with this and I enjoy playing the really organic nature of how the light reflects off the shell here as opposed to the mechanical nature. You can see my little studio window, uh, which was that old 17th century technique that the, the great Dutch painters, still life painters, used to use um, that I borrowed for this painting. So, um, so it was fun to play off these, these two, let them play off of each other. And I put them on opposite areas uh, in this little focus space so that one could look at the other, turn one's back, and then look at the former. And then that, that sort of back and forth action, I think, is, uh, is a wonderful way of comparing the works and, and uh, sort of absorbing them. Very calm and very very still compared to the other, which is much more active.